All right, this is Lab 5's updated questions, okay? ARP related, that question has not changed. For this IP address, tell me all about IP. Uh, and the way this looks on here, I can't change that. So MAC goes in the line below MAC, then IP goes in the one after IP, and so on and so forth. That one's easy enough. Question two, that's for a different IP ad. Uh, yeah, identify the device. Sending... The device with okay yeah those are those are correct. Uh, question three says why is the R packet or ARP reply packet from the device identified in the previous question absent from the capture file? We're talking about this. Okay, the IP the the packet coming from this IP address is what I'm referring to. Question four I want to know the MAC address of the server and of the client. Easy enough there. That used to be two separate questions. I put them in one. Question five, this is the one that Tony had a question about. So several packets were sent to a MAC address that does not belong to either the client or the server. What's the MAC address they went to? That's what it should have been. That's easy enough to do now. Makes much more sense. Then, which protocol? Now, on the prior lab, I gave you a bunch of questions. I was going to convert some of them and remove some of them modified. So this is, what protocol uh, was this message using from the list below? So, in other words, question five's packet, which protocol was it? Exactly. Okay, question six. Oh, is that right? That one zero zero, that's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> when receiving both test cases, which packet type is not possible? Is it not possible to determine the OS by reviewing the contents? I have no idea why one zero zero one zero zero is in there. Ignore that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'll edit that out, but that's not supposed to be there. Question seven, we're just talking about lab five again. I changed the questions. It's in the assignment. But When reviewing an ICMP packet with a don't fragment flag with a value of one, what OS could the source be from? Could it be FreeBSD, OS 400, Solaris, or Windows? And it's multiple select. When receiving an ICMP packet with a don't fragment flag with a value of zero, what device or what OS could it be coming from? And give me, I'll give you a different list. Again, multiple select and the right or wrong, right minus wrong. So if you get it one right, but you get one wrong, it's going to take away the point for the one right. Question nine, I gave you the packet. I said find it. Which test case did it come from? What's the frame number? Easy enough there. And obviously the frame number goes on the next line. And question 10, what's the name in the stuff? That one's simple. Found that one like two seconds. Okay. So those are the new questions for this. Okay. Now, the, the tougher stuff, which we really haven't done much about, is questions 7 and 8. Okay. It really pertains to OS fingerprinting. Now, I'm going to stop this preview. Actually, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to pause the recording and pause the screen and go fix that typo. Really. So when I go through this, I should uh, go up what's in the quiz, not what's in the thing. The only thing I did was on that one question where it has 100, 100, I removed that. Done. So that's all I changed. So now it says ARP. It was on the ARP one, wasn't it? Yeah, I removed that. Yeah, I had an issue. My machine downstairs was doing some really weird stuff today. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about OS fingerprinting. Okay. Um, I gave you three links here. They talk about passive OS fingerprinting. Okay, you feel free to look at these. They're actually quite informative. Like for instance, on this first link, they talk about different operating systems and the initial TTL and the window size. What? Yeah, I'm recording now. Right, hold on, let me pause. Tony's got a question. But yes, you're going to have to look at TTLs and stuff like that to possibly determine some of the OSs. And you'll notice, for instance, if the TTL is 64, it could be multiples. Now, only go off the OSs I give you on the list. Okay, so for instance, Google's not going to be on there. That kind of stuff. You all know what TTL is, don't you? Time to live? Okay, all right. But they, and only worry about the OSs I give you. Don't worry about any other OSs, okay? 
So, but this is a very good article to read. It talks about different things. And you can actually change some of the stuff up slightly. Okay. Now, the next link, get to it, is from Sands. Pretty good as well. It goes into a little more depth in some areas. But, uh, now I only gave you three links. There's lots more. Okay. Look through this. And, again, it, it can help you possibly... Look at some of these packets. Obviously, it can be done because Wireshark does it, Nmap does it, and a lot of other ones do it. Okay. So there's the second one. And the third one is uh, from InfoSec Institute. I think it's going to spam us. Does it? Let's look. No, it doesn't. Okay, good. Yeah, they have a decent link there as well. They talk about active and passive fingerprinting. So please... Please, please take a look at these. Uh, I knew it was on there. I knew they were going to spam it. Okay. Look at these, and it might possibly help you. And the InfoSec one actually has a lot of good information at the bottom, a good links. Okay. Especially how Nmap does it and other stuff like that. So kind of a cool idea. Uh, those of you in um, security auditing, we actually did more with that this semester than before. Any of you in that class? You're not in there, are you? No. Yeah. It really... Really freaked out a lot of people. Okay. So I gave you some different resources for that. And what I also gave you was some specific packets. So you can look at those. Now these are PCAP files, but should download, maybe, in theory, and open up fine with Wireshark. Yep. It'll, so there's packets of different types. Feel free to look through them. Now, I had mentioned before how I was doing a programming project I wanted you all to work on. I actually spent a lot of time yesterday working on that. And it's usable, but not good enough yet. I need to finish it before I can actually assign something on it. So that's why you don't have the programming aspect of it yet. It's much easier to do it in Java. I'm sorry. It's just... Um, but yeah, look at all these different packet types. This will give you something to work with. There's Telnet, and then there's DHCP. Everybody knows how all these work. I shouldn't have to explain those, should I? You all been through this stuff before. You all know what DHCP is and all that. So what happens if you got a client looking for DHCP address, and the server's not responding? What what might you get? The machine will eventually assign itself out of Microsoft's address. Right. Facility. Right, the automatic private IP addressing, exactly. You know, I used to not like that, but it's awesome because you can tell if your DHCP server is online or not just by that normally, okay? Like the DHCP one, they talk about the release, the discover, the offer, the request, the acknowledgement, that whole DORA, D-O-R-A, okay? So, but you can look through those, so that might help you. And there was actually something else you can actually look at some of the vendor class settings, and you can this specific one. You can actually see where they're determining that it's actually Microsoft at this point. So, all right. Um, hopefully, everybody knows how to read these this data. You should know how to read all this data by now. Yes, dude. Okay. Um, someone actually asked me a question today. You do realize that, you know, most packets all have, like the Ethernet 2 section is going to be the same for most packets. So you're going to, in other words, you can have your source and your destination addresses in the same place and all that kind of stuff. So if somebody asked me that today, I'm like, yeah, they're pretty much there on each of these. You can look, they're always there. So I guess, I don't know, just different. Okay, so I gave you some Telnet, some DHCP, some FTP packets that one and you don't have to do anything with these you're not analyzing them in any way I gave them to you just if you want to look at some of them to get different values for the OS fingerprinting area when I actually did this assignment years ago we actually um, had to do stuff with these packets but I'm not requiring you to do that at least at this point okay there's FTP And 
TCP. Here's TCP. Okay. You see enough there. So there's all the different types you can look at. Should give you an idea of how some of the different protocols work. The only one I didn't include, I did not include one for ICMP and ARP, but these have ARP in them, so you should be fine there. And you can always get one for, you all know what ICMP is. You know how to make your own ICMP packet? You just ping something, and that normally will give it to you. And I think actually the test captures have ICMP in them, don't they? Just should be fine with those. So, all right, that'll help you. At least these three links will help you finish Lab 5's project. It's not that different, difficult. It's just something to get done. Um, we're just about at midterm, so we need to have a test soon, just like I said in the other class. Um, I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after. I'm going to send you all an email. When I decide. So I'm gonna let you take the test at home, but I just need to determine when I want to give it to you. So all right. So now after the test, we're gonna start doing some stuff with some mobile devices. Have you so the finals in here or on the proctor? I don't know yet. I actually took a uh, proctored exam myself two weekends ago and uh, it's not a big deal. Proctor was from India, <laughs> so they and the lag was so bad. They the vid, the the chat. The, I mean, the audio portion. They couldn't talk to me, so I ended up using the chat feature instead of the actual you know microphone. But, so I don't know. We'll see. We're just having you know. There's such an issue with plagiarism, but it was funny because I actually had a student come into my office. I think yesterday, I said, "Man, you know, like." In my other class, I made a brand new project. He's like, man, I searched the entire internet. I couldn't find that project anywhere. <laughs> I mean, well, because he wanted help to help figure out the answers. So I'm like, yeah, it's a brand new project. I just made it. But, yeah, I caught six people cheating in another class, and it's just, Already? yes. I didn't tell you you to pick that up at midterm. Yeah, well, um, any questions on that? the the finish of lab five assignment i did put a date on it it's actually due on the sixth so you have some time there okay all right and uh after yeah i think we're going to do a test and then after that we're going to start playing with some different mobile device stuff i know we looked at it a little bit we're going to do some more with that i just got to get them back we're kind of sharing it with another class right now the mobile device security class has them and we need them so all right. Um, I'm not going to cover any new content tonight. I just want you to go through the finish the, that quiz, look at that stuff I gave you, and that should pretty much answer the rest of that. Okay.